The Acantheria are a group of radiolarian protozoa, distinguished mainly by their strontium sulfate skeletons. Acantherians are heterotrophic marine microplankton that range in size from about 200 microns in diameter up to several millimeters. Some acantherians have photosynthetic endosymbionts and hence are considered mixotros. Acantherian radiolarians have shells made of celestine crystal, the heaviest mineral in the ocean. Acantherian skeletons are composed of strontium sulfate, serso 4 in the form of mineral celestine crystal. Celestine is named for the delicate blue color of its crystals, and is the heaviest mineral in the ocean. The denseness of their celestite ensures acantherian shells function as mineral ballast, resulting in fast sedimentation to bathypelagic depths. High settling fluxes of acantherian cysts have been observed at times in the Iceland Basin and the Southern Ocean, as much as half of the total gravitational organic carbon flux. Acantherian skeletons are composed of strontium sulfate crystals secreted by vacuoles surrounding each spicule or spine. Acantherians are the only marine organisms known to biomineralize strontium sulfate as the main component of their skeletons, making them unique. However, unlike other radiolarians whose skeletons are made of silica, acantherian skeletons do not fossilize, primarily because strontium sulfate is very scarce in seawater and the crystals dissolve after the acantherians die. The arrangement of the spines is very precise, and is described by what is called the Mullerian Law, which can be described in terms of lines of latitude and longitude, the spines lie on the intersections between five of the former. Symmetric about an equator, and eight of the latter, spaced uniformly. Each line of longitude carries either two tropical spines or one equatorial and two polar spines, in alternation. The cell cytoplasm is divided into two regions, the endoplasm and the ectoplasm. The endoplasm, at the core of the cell, contains the main organelles, including many nuclei, and is delineated from the ectoplasm by a capsular wall made of a microfibril mesh. In symbiotic species, the algal symbionts are maintained in the endoplasm. The ectoplasm consists of cytoplasmic extensions used for prey capture and also contains food vacuoles for prey digestion. The ectoplasm is surrounded by a periplasmic cortex, also made up of microfibrils, but arranged into 20 plates, each with a hole through which one spicule projects. The cortex is linked to the spines by contractile myonemes, which assist in buoyancy control by allowing the ectoplasm to expand and contract, increasing and decreasing the total volume of the cell. The way that the spines are joined at the center of the cell varies and is one of the primary characteristics by which acantherians are classified. The skeletons are made up of either 10 diametric or 20 radial spicules. Diametric spicules cross the center of the cell, whereas radial spicules terminate at the center of the cell where they either form a tight or flexible junction depending on species. Acantherians with diametric spicules or loosely attached radial spicules are able to rearrange or shed spicules and form cysts. The morphological classification system roughly agrees with phylogenetic trees based on the alignment of ribosomal RNA genes, although the groups are mostly polyphyletic. Holocanthida seems to have evolved first and includes molecular clades A, B, and D. Chonacanthida evolved second and includes only one molecular clade, clade C. Arthrocanthida and Symphacanthida, which have the most complex skeletons, evolved most recently and constitute molecular clades E and F. A clade F. Acantherian with symbionts visible in red many acantherians. Including some in clade B and all in clades E and F, host single celled algae within their inner cytoplasm. By participating in this photosymbiosis, acantherians are essentially mixotrophs, they acquire energy through both heterotrophy and autotrophy. The relationship may make it possible for acantherians to be abundant in low nutrient regions of the oceans and may also provide extra energy necessary to maintain their elaborate strontium sulfate skeletons. It is hypothesized that the acantherians provide the algae with nutrients that they acquire by capturing and digesting prey in return for sugar that the algae produces during photosynthesis. It is not known, however, whether the algal symbionts benefit from the relationship or if they are simply being exploited and then digested by the acantherians. Symbiotic holocanthida acantherians host diverse symbiont assemblages, including several genera of dinoflagellates and a haptophyte. Clade E and F acantherians have a more specific symbiosis and primarily host symbionts from the haptophyte genus Phocistus, although they sometimes also host Chrysochromolina symbionts. 
Plate epicantherians simultaneously host multiple species and strains of Phocistus, and their internal symbiont community does not necessarily match the relative availability of potential symbionts in the surrounding environment. The mismatch between internal and external symbiont communities suggests that acantherians can be selective in choosing symbionts and probably do not continuously digest and recruit new symbionts and maintain symbionts for extended periods of time instead. Hypothetical scenario of the life cycle in symbiotic and cyst-forming acantheria with shallow and deep reproduction, respectively. Adults are usually multinucleated. Earlier diverging clades are able to shed their spines and form cysts, which are often referred to as reproductive cysts. Reproduction is thought to take place by formation of swarmer cells, which may be flagellate, and cysts have been observed to release these swarmers. Non-insisted cells have also been seen releasing swarmers in laboratory conditions. Not all life cycle stages have been observed, however, and no one has witnessed the fusion of swarmers to produce a new acantherian. Cysts are often found in sediment traps and it is therefore believed that the cysts help acantherians sink into deep water. Genetic data and some imaging suggest that non-cyst forming acantherians may also sink to deep water to release swarmers. Releasing swarmer cells in deeper water may improve the survival chances of juveniles. Study of these organisms has been hampered mainly by an inability to close the life cycle and maintain these organisms in culture through successive generations. Thanks for watching.